Okay, hello and welcome to this video about Azure Functions and how to get started with a local development with Azure Functions. Um, I'm quite a fan of Azure Functions, which you can also see here from my shirt. I really love them. And um, I want to give you a quick start on how to get started with local development without needing any, any connection to an Azure account. Okay, so um, what will we be talking about? Um, we will talk about uh, the tooling that you need. I will focus on the uh, Node.js development. Um, we will set up the tooling for a simple Azure Functions development, and then we will also um, do some, some advanced stuff, namely Azure Durable Functions, and I will show you what additional tooling is needed in order to get those things going. So, um, let's get it started. What do you need in order to get things going? Well, um, first of all, you need an editor. I will um, use Visual Studio Code for um, doing the, the editing. And I have already installed uh, vanilla Visual Studio Code here in this um, virtual machine that I've set up in Azure. And uh, that's, that's one part that you need. The next part that you need is Node.js. Here you have to distinguish which um, type or which version of Azure Function you want to develop. There are two um, versions that are recommended. You can do it on version 2. Then you need um, Node.js 10, so the, the long-term support version 10. Or if you want to do the, the new um, Microsoft Azure uh, function stuff, namely version 3, you have to switch to 12 that I have already um, downloaded and installed. So when we make a short check, node minus v, you will see that I have here version 12. So um, if you have done that, if you have that stuff available on your computer, you are ready to go with Azure Functions. So let's open um, Visual Studio Code. And the first thing that you have to do is you have to install the extension in order to be able to interact with Azure Functions, create Azure Functions, do some scaffolding here in um, Visual Studio. What you have to do is you check for Azure Functions where there is one extension here, you install it. And you're ready to go. You have here now this new icon, which allows you to create new Azure Function projects um, on your machine. Now, beside that, you need uh, one additional thing. You need the Azure Function runtime. The Azure Functions are, are open source. So with the, the runtime, so are the workers for uh, Azure Functions. And what you need now is to install the Azure Function runtime locally. As I've said before, um, I will use version 3 of Azure Functions. So I make an npm install, do that globally. The Azure Function core tools, I specify the version here. And yeah, I kick that stuff off. So let's see, this will now um, go to npm. It will download the Azure Function Core Tools from the corresponding CDN. And um, it will install that stuff. So while this is installing, you also need um, well some additional tooling that will help you in order to do the um, HTTP requests. I have installed Postman for that. Um, that's, that's one option, really depends on you, um, or you can also um, go here to the extensions and what's also a quite handy extension is this little REST client that you can install and you can then create um, little uh, .http files in order to, to um, well, do the HTTP calls. I will install that and we'll see if we use that one or, or um, 
postman. Perhaps we even do a mix. So okay, so now we have installed the Azure function call tools. So we can check um, the version via func. And um, this will give us out, okay, we are on 3.0, that's great. So um, we can now get started with our first little demo of Azure Functions. So how do you now do your local development? So let's go back to, um, to Visual Studio Code and open the Azure Function extension. And um, here we will create now a new project. Um, let's uh, put that on, on the desktop. Let's make a new folder, um, Azure Functions simple. So we will use this directory. And um, then in the next section, you are asked in which language you want to um, create the project. There are several languages here that you can use. I um, will use TypeScript. And here on the next selection, which is doing the, the scaffolding of your function project, you can now distinguish um, how you want to trigger the function. You can hook up the function with um, a lot of different triggers, like um, uh, Azure Cosmos DB, so whenever changed, there is a change within Azure Cosmos DB. Um, this can be picked up and will fire your function or uh, event hubs, queues, whatsoever. We will go now the easy way and do the HTTP trigger, so whenever uh, an HTTP call is issued to the function, it will be invoked and will do something. We will call it um, a simple function, function, okay. Um, and concerning the authorization level, we are doing some sandboxing, so we will say uh, it's anonymous, let's make stuff a bit easier. We will open it in the current window, and um, this does now all the scaffolding of your function, which means um, it creates uh, a lot of files for you and does a lot of stuff for you. So what are the, the most important files that you probably know? That's the, the package.json, which simply says what are the dependencies that you need in order to make the function run. Here you see now uh, a little drawback of the um, versioning um, with the versioning because of the scaffolding via this um, plugin. Um, that's not super up to date. So what we will do here, I will um, adjust that one um, within the package.json. That's just the typing. We have here some local settings.json that's um, super important for your um, local execution time that states what's your function workaround time. And that will be, become more important when we uh, switch to Azure Durable Functions. Um, well, what do we have next? We have the function.json, which basically says what does your function uh, do, how it is um, configured. What's the configuration? Um, you see here, or you find here, all the information about the authorization level that we used before, the type of the trigger, which is direction in, what HTTP methods are supported. So, for example, now it's get and post, and um, I will now correct that to I will just I just want to support get. And we have some some so-called outbound binding. So, um, what stuff goes out of the function? And uh, that's also an HTTP request. We have now one error that's um, yeah for sure because um, we uh, have not installed all dependencies. So um, what I will do now, um, I will switch to the desktop um, and go to the Azure function simple. It will do an npm install right in this directory. This will now install um, all the, the other dependencies. And now let's see. Everything is gone. Great. 
So um, going back to the package.json, let's check if there is any uh, special script that we want to start. Yeah, we, have, we, we are in the TypeScript world, so we can have um, a build, or we can have a start, which then implicitly um, does the build for you. So let's do an npm run start, and let's see what happens. This will now execute the build. Uh, we'll do all the stuff that it has to do, and it will then run um, the function startup. So what you can see here is, first of all, beautiful ASCII art, um, setting all your, your function work around time, doing some stuff concerning the, the configuration, and after some um, logging, it tells you, okay, I have now provided uh, an HTTP endpoint on your local host system that you can call now. Now uh, let's see what happens if we um, do a call to that end. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, if we do a call to that endpoint, um, let's do it with a new file. Let's say we do a REST call. REST call .http. So we make use of this extension that I installed. Let me do a get call um, to the to this file here. Um, oh man, now I messed it up. Um, let's restart it. So we do again the npm run start. And all the stuff happens again. I will now mark that, copy it, put it here. Um, yeah, and let's see what happens when I send that request. So what it does is, oh, it says it's a bad request, and it tells me please pass a name on the query string or in the request point. Okay, um, why did that happen? That's simply due to the to the logic that is implemented within the function. So what you see here is, um, I have an HTTP trigger, and it expects either within the body or within the query parameters of the HTTP request uh, parameter called name that it will then return. Okay, so let's adjust the rest call and say its name and my name is Christian. So I put Christian here. I will save it and I will send the request. And here we go. Status 200. Hello, Christian. Okay, that is quite cool already. So within a few minutes after you have everything installed, you are ready to run. Azure functions locally on your machine. Nothing more to do than to install the, the Azure function core tools that are um, available on the on the NPM. Um, install an editor, I prefer Visual Studio Code, install the um, the plugin and you're ready and good to go. So that's that's quite quite easy. Now um, let's close all that stuff and go um, a bit further. So let's make the um, Azure durable functions because we will now switch to the durable functions, which um, represent, um, well, some kind of, of um, a stateful version of Azure functions. So you can model workflows there. Um, nevertheless, you still um, benefit from the uh, serverless possibilities that you have. So you will only be charged if you run it within Azure um, for the real execution. Um, you can also model some, some more complex workflows, some timer conditions, and so on and so forth. However, if you want to develop this stuff locally, you have to do some more things. Um, there are quite some dependencies because in order to um, store the state locally, you have to install some additional stuff. And well, um, I, I have already downloaded all that stuff. So what you need is you need a little local database. And here um, 
on Windows he used preferred the SQL Server 2019 Express version as of the time of this video and um, I will kick off the um, installation of this version here because this uh, takes some time to install so um, it's getting things ready um, this version is no longer supported okay cool um, why not then let's use this one ah, okay fine here we go um, we have here uh, the basic version, so nothing to change here. Um, I have read and accept all that stuff that was something that I did yesterday, and I install this thing. So this is now installing your local database in order to enable you to store the state. Um, as I said, this will now um, take a bit, there is quite some, some download to do, there's quite some installation to do. Um, and then there are two more things that you have to uh, install. One thing is the storage emulator that you have to um, install. What does this thing do? It <laughs> emulates the storage for the other durable functions, as its name says. So um, this is available on GitHub. I usually use the, the standalone installer that you can directly download and use. But before we um, kick that off, we wait a bit until the server is installed. Um, now, if you also want to um, take a look into your storage, there is one more thing that I recommend to install, and um, that's the um, Azure Storage Explorer that you can download from, from the um, Azure site of Microsoft, um, which allows you to connect locally to Azure, to Azure Storages in your Azure account, or also to connect locally to your local storage um, that you emulate. So uh, let's see, uh, we can install the Storage Explorer in parallel to save some time. So of course, again, I'll, I simply agree to everything. It's fine. So uh, this is a little bit faster the Storage Explorer to install. Um, but also does quite some thing. Let's see. Okay, installation is going further on. So in general, um, when you do all the installations, basically a, a one-click installation or uh, something like that, because um, uh, as long as you do not change any defaults, all these little tools are quite working nicely together. And as soon as you change the defaults, well, I'm sure you have to to take that into account when you configure them. Um, okay, this is now installing, installing. Let's see, uh, we can now perhaps already start with scaffolding our function while this installation takes place. So we are already in the right directory. I up, uh, open up code. What was that? A message from the installation. Okay, I open up code. Storage Explorer is already finished. Now I really open up code. This one is still installing. Um, okay, so let's start with uh, scaffolding the, the durable function. So I again go to this um, extension. I create a new project because I've switched the directory. Um, so I will use this directory that I'm already in. I will again go for TypeScript now. For uh, durable functions, you will need 
three um, um, ingredients, you will need a trigger, so something that's, that that's serves as an entry point to kick off your durable function. Then you will need an orchestrator and then you will need an activity. The orchestrator basically orchestrates all the stuff that is done within your durable function. So this is kind of the, the uh, code that tells your workflow what to do, when and what. And you have the activities, which are the, the building blocks of the workflow that then do the real action. So let's start with the um, HTTP start um, app. This is the, the entry point. I don't know why there's always one attached, so I'll do that, put that away. This does the scaffolding. Um, this is just, well, don't show it again. Um, creating your, your durable um, orchestrator and waiting then for input. Next, uh, we want to create the orchestrator itself. So we will uh, call that uh, durable orchestrator. Um, and as you can see here, um, this orchestrator, we will, we will take a look at it later on, but as you can see here, this calls activities. Um, so I also need some activity functions that would make sense. So I call them hello. And yeah, from the scaffolding perspective, we are done now. So uh, this is now the Azure storage that has finished. Uh, let's see, um, we have the SQL server that has finished. It's um, default, great. So we can um, now install the emulator. That makes sense. So where do I have it? I have it here. Uh, yep. Now this emulator, when it's installed, it will hopefully um, come up. And it's now trying to um, get a connection to your local SQL server. There is, there is nothing that you have to do here explicitly. It's simply looking according to its configuration to uh, the well, SQL instances that it, that it expects. Um, now it found one under localhost SQL Express. It's creating um, now all the, the necessary stuff and it says it's ready to use. You have now here also listed all the different um, options that you have so you can now ask for the status and you will see that it's running and it has several endpoints for the blob store, for the queue store, for the table. And what we will do now is we will attach our um, Azure Storage Explorer to this local emulator and we call it um, local dev. As you can see here, all the, the ports correspond to uh, the ports that are given here. So we can fire that stuff up and says let's give it a connection and it has successfully added the connection so we can now go to the table space and there we will see nothing because we didn't do anything up to now. Okay so let's get next let's dive a bit into this durable function thing again uh, um, structure is basically the same. We have the uh, package.json which has all the dependencies. We again uh, put that to the latest and greatest um, for the dev dependencies. Um, we have now again the local settings.json. Now this file is important um, because 
here you um, specify now where should the function look for the job storage. So where are the where is the state of your Drobo function stored? Um, and this is given by this parameter. And this is something where you have to fill in um, a value. I'm looking now over there because there is my cheat sheet. Um, and I say use the development storage and set this stuff to true. Um, I have the function work runtime, that's fine. Um, I will save that. And um, there are now some more things that you have to do or that you should do when you work with um, durable functions. First of all, we have to clean up um, these errors. There is um, an npm package that needs to be installed, and that's durable functions. Durable functions technically is an add-on to, um, to the functions themselves. So what we have to do is we have to install the uh, durable functions package, which I do now. So um, this error should have now vanished. So let's clean this stuff up a bit. Um, okay, let's go from the bottom to the top. So as I mentioned before, we have the HTTP starter, which is uh, serving as the, the HTTP endpoint and um, as a router to your durable function. So uh, what we have here is we have an asynchronous function which creates the client and then says, okay, I started the orchestration and then waits for the response. What we see here, um, it's uh, all the stuff that, that we know from the simple function is an HTTP trigger. And here you see um, the, the routing where it routes to the orchestrator and within the um, HTTP request, you have to hand over the name of the orchestrator, which is in our case the Drupal function strategy.js. Um, in order to enable this um, little piece of code to configure it to interact with the orchestrator, we have to give in an additional binding, which is given here and which is outdated. So it's no longer orchestration client, but it's durable client. Um, okay, okay, uh, that's that's it on this level. Then on the next level, we are on the orchestrator level. The orchestrator has basically one binding. It's an orchestration uh, trigger binding, which defines that this function is an orchestration trigger. And what you can see here now, it's um, using generator functions in order to do um, the orchestration of activities. So what happens here is it simply calls activities one after the other and it returns the, the complete array. And this call of activity um, has two parameters here in this case. It has the name of the activity that should be called. Be aware this is the string. And if you uh, have watched before when I created the activity, there was the hello one. Here is some mismatch of the of the templates. So um, if you created it with hello one, either you change the name of this um, of this directory, or you change um, the hello here to hello one. Um, yeah, that's that's basically it. That's all about the um, uh, orchestration, the orchestrator, and last but not least, we have the um, activity that's defined by or configured via uh, this binding. It's an activity trigger and this does nothing more or nothing less than um, yeah, just returning a string um, and yeah, bringing together the, the input binding which was handed over by the orchestrator. That was the, um, the, the second parameter here. Okay, so 
So now we, we basically has, have everything set up. Nevertheless, we um, are working on, on a little bit of an outdated version um, or on a, on a version where you do not get the latest and greatest stuff. Um, the dependency to the durable functions, which I mentioned before is an extension, is hooked in via this little stuff here in the um, in the um, host.json file. So we will now remove that. So the extension, the durable extension, will no longer be automatically downloaded when you start the function, but you have to explicitly install it. In order to explicitly install it, you have to have the .NET SDK installed. Now, depending on which version you want to run, um, it's .NET SDK 2.2 uh, .2 or 3.1. I used, um, I want to use the, the latest stuff. So um, I have already installed the .NET Core 3.1. It's available for uh, for download. So no no issue here. So um, what we will do now is I will do a func extension install. I tell it, hey, please install the durable extension here within this directory. And I specify the version 2.2.0, which is the latest one. And um, this will now install me um, the extension that I need and all the dependencies that I need in order to make things run. This will first take a bit of a time to uh, download all the stuff and compile all the stuff. And what we can already see here is that um, the project structure has changed. I have now this little um, extensions where um, no, I want that. Um, where I have two references now in here, namely the durable task and the dependency, which is kind of the the analog to the um, stuff that we removed from the host.json file before this extension bundle. Now I have really the latest and greatest stuff for sure. I have also here the binaries that are needed in order to get things running. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. I hope I did not forget anything, but we will see if I did. Um, starting the stuff is the same as before, so I make an npm run start, which will do the installation um, or the, 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 the transpiling with TypeScript and um, I have obviously not installed TypeScript. So um, I have not installed all the dependencies, didn't I? So, so. so let's see. No. Ah, okay. Um, this is now a quite new error <laughs> that that somehow came. I don't know, I, I, I saw it the last week or last two weeks, uh, which was not there before. I don't know what changed, but this is something that you might see now and you'll say, oh, what did I do wrong? Uh, nothing. Uh, you just need to install one further dependency and that you need to install the, the types that are relevant for Node. You can install that as a dev dependency. Um, and then let's retry to run the stuff. Let's see. Yeah, we see the wonderful ASCII art again. And now what you have seen here, now three functions have been loaded. 
of course, three, because I have my starter function, I have my orchestrator function, and I have my activity function. Um, everything looks good. Again, um, there is a local endpoint that is um, exposed here. Everything locally. So I will now switch over to Postman, put in the URL, and now in order to do the routing, I have to specify the name of this orchestrator. As I usually often do typos, I go to the function of JSON and put that in. And what I will do now, I will kick off the durable function orchestrator, um, which will then make use of this little thing that we installed here, this, this emulator with the SQL um, database underneath. And um, yeah, let's kick it off and see what happens. So it will now, as this is an asynchronous call, return me several other endpoints that I can call in order to query the status, in um, order to terminate the event or to purge the history. So let's take a look at how the status looks like. Um, yeah, it's completed. Uh, the output is as we expected, so we have these three hello calls that have been executed one after another. And now let's see how uh, things have evolved here within the storage. So if I do a refresh here, before there was no, um, no table there, now let's see. We have now two tables. We have one for the, um, for the instances, so we have one instance of our uh, durable function orchestrator. We can already see here what is the output and what's the runtime status. And when we take a look at the history, we can see what happened within the orchestrator. So if we now um, uh, sort that, we can see, ah, okay, uh, it started the execution, then it kicked off the orchestrator. The orchestrator well scheduled its first task, so the first hello activity, which was, um, let me lie, uh, the Tokyo one. Um, and then the orchestrator, so this orchestrator function, set itself to sleep again, so it scaled down to zero. The activity function kicked off and then called back, task completed, the orchestration, orchestrator function woke up again and said, ah, okay, I have now finished my first, the, the Tokyo one, now I call my second activity. And this uh, continued over and over again uh, until all the stuff is finished. So you can also see that uh, here somewhere within the results, yeah, um, we have here uh, returned the Hello Tokyo, we have here the Hello Seattle, the Hello London, and finally, when the um, orchestration execution was completed overall, we have the result stream. So um, if, you, if you play around a lot with that stuff, um, this table will be, become quite messy, for sure you can filter and so on and so forth. But if you just want to play around, I personally would recommend to do um, from time to time uh, clear all, which will purge all the stuff away and you start from a clean slate. Um, so we can do that. This, this uh, simply clears everything. We can refresh and well, what you will see is everything is gone. Um, Okay, okay, for sure. Now, um, if the function is still running, it will say, "Hey, now I really have a problem because my my table vanished." Um, there is one other thing that I want to mention uh, because this happens to me all the time. I do my stuff within the um, within Visual Studio Code. Um, I I. Um, Start perhaps my, my laptop was uh, set to sleep, or uh, anyway, I didn't start the Azure storage emulator. So um, this is now stopped. So running is false, and then really the first thing that always happens to me when I kick off my, my Azure function is I do a npm run start. And what happens now, I just want to show you the error error. 
um, it will do the build. And then we'll try to start. It will load the extension. And now it will initialize this, this warm up extension here, down here. And whenever you see that, and whenever that takes quite some time as it does here, you do not have started your storage emulator. That's something, it's, it's like a reaction for me already. If I see that, and if it's not running through, I know uh, I'm simply a fool. I did not start that. I go to my storage, um, uh, my, my um, storage emulator. I put in start. This thing starts, um, and I do it again. And, well, it does the build. It does the function start, and it runs through just easily. So just to, to remind you, I, I would guess as this is happening to me, I'm not the probably not the only one that often forgets that. If you see that, um, put a put a hole in it and um, start your emulator. That's it. That was basically it. So I hope I could show you that it's super easy to. Um, set up your other function tooling um, for simple functions, for durable functions. For durable functions, there's a bit more um, to do because you have to um, set up the infrastructure for storage and so on and so forth. Um, but it's, it's really straightforward for Windows. For Mac and Linux, um, you do not have the support from Microsoft concerning the tooling, concerning the storage emulator. As far as I know, there is an open source, um, uh, open source or, or community project that delivers this emulator. But I have no Mac OS, so I, I cannot say if this works out fine or not. Um, nevertheless, if you um, if you want, you can develop locally, and you can connect here to your remote web storage within Azure. So that's that's possible. That's doable. Um, if you now want to dive deeper into, um, into Azure Functions, I can highly recommend the Azure Function documentation, where you have a lot of tutorials, where you have a lot of, of guides how to create your first function in, in JavaScript. For example, or if you prefer C sharp or Java or Python, um, everything is there. Um, you have to pay a bit of attention concerning support of durable functions. Um, for PowerShell, it's, it's durable functions light, so um, not not as fully fledged as for JavaScript or C sharp. What I also can recommend is uh, the learning path that Microsoft offers for free where you can really dive through um, several stuff um, about serverless, where you have also uh, Azure Functions um, and, and get more insight into the input and output binding and so on and so forth. So um, this is definitely something that I can highly recommend. Okay, so um, that's basically it from my side. I I thank you very much for your attention and I hope you, you liked the video and I hope we could get you a kickstart um, with Azure Function Development. In case you have questions or comments, just leave them down below at the video. I thank you very much.